Hi there, and welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Olette and Casey Berman. Hi, everyone. Casey Berman from the Love or Leave the Law podcast. So happy to have you back. Um, we have a very special guest, Adam and I do uh, this episode, which we're extremely excited to have. Uh, Mark Weber is the director of the Harvard Law School Office of Career Services. Uh, he's joining us today for uh, a great conversation. Little background, and then we're going to dive into the talk. Um, Mark was, comes from the University of Illinois College of Law. He was an assistant dean for career services there. Prior to that, he practiced law in Chicago. Um, at the firm Schwartz, Cooper, Kolb, and Gaynor. Um, he's also a CPA and has background at Ernst & Young. Um, he's taught a ton, has written a ton, and has been at Harvard for, uh, how about Mark? How long have you been there now? Um, since 2000. Since 2000. So, um, Mark, we connected with Mark through a lot of work that we've done with the ABA. Um, a great guy. So happy to have him. Uh, we're going to talk today about the legal industry. We're going to talk about trends he sees um, and get into a whole bunch of stuff. So, Mark, so happy to have you. Thank you for joining. I am delighted to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I didn't embarrass you too much. I kept it a little short on the intro. but um, Not at all. I am a big fan of yours. You and I have been talking over the, uh, the past few months, past, few, past a year or so with the work that we're doing at the ABA. Maybe you're at Harvard, top law school in the country. Can you, first of all, maybe tell us just what your day-to-day -day is like, some of the work that you're doing there? Um, and then I'd just like to see some, some trends that you may be seeing in, in the legal industry as well as, uh, you know, when it comes to the job market from, from your viewpoint at Harvard, whether it's big law or 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 elsewhere? That'd be really interesting for us. Well, in a nutshell, you know, people will ask, well, what do you do? I, I, I said, first, I think I have one of the best jobs in the country. We work with um, working with students, trying to help them figure out who they are, what they want to do, and how to get what they want yeah. is, um, it's great. And when you're at a school like Harvard, where your students are in demand, you get to do, you get to win. You get yeah. to get the, you know, your students and alums get to really reach a lot of their goals. Um, yeah. In a nutshell, what we do here is, I have, is the head of the office here. What I and my whole team do, do is we advise, we educate, and we connect our students and alumni. Mm -hmm. You know, the advising part is easy, you know, in terms of we sit down with students, helping them figure out who they are, where they want to go and how to get there, as I just said. We educate them about all the different options they, that are available to them through you know, one-on-one -on -one counseling, through programming, through podcasts, through um, written content. And then we connect them through a lot of, whether it be through programs or through our recruitment programs yeah. where we, I think we run the largest recruiting program in the world in terms wow. of the number of employers that come here. Right. It's only for the purpose to hire our students. That's what we do, um, and it's a great job. I think what's unique, um, you know, here at Harvard, or for me, is I, I have left the law too, but I'm connected to it in a different way. Right. You, know, you know, Mark, how do you, one thing you said about helping them, this is great, helping them find who they are. You know, I run into that with Leave Law Behind, what I call they're the unique genius. And this is either for students who are saying, I don't know if I want to practice. I, I get a lot of folks in law school, but then also people who've graduated who've said, I, you know, I, don't, I, I think I want to leave the law. And, and so we go through a process as to really like, what are your skills and strengths and let that inform where you go to a job as opposed to just security or stature or things along those lines. How, what, any tips or tricks or thoughts on how you help people, students or, else, or otherwise, you know, find out who they are? What, what does that mean? It's a great question. And I think there's no magic, um, there's no magic bullet. But what I would say is it's through a lot of um, self-assessment, career exploration, through a lot of um, talking and educating so that students and alums are making informed decisions. That's right. I don't like people making decisions based upon what they think. I'd rather it be based upon what they know. Yeah. And um, so one of the things you talk about, people really thinking about whether or not they, you know, should practice, whether it be, oh, whether it be in the public or private sectors. One thing I should say in, at Harvard, 
the office that I had, the Office of Career Services, our whole focus is on the private sector. Mm -hmm. When law firms, businesses, we have a whole other office devoted to um, mm. the public sector in both and in either sector, you can have a very satisfying, rewarding, and in, you know, an enjoyable, prosperous career. Um, right. The thing that I think is important, um, we have so many people who are, you say that there's a million things you can do with a law degree, and there are. You know, there's a lot of things you can do, and the law degree can make you um, very, very, um, the skill set that you develop is a huge yeah. Right. value add. However, you've got to look at the value proposition. And when someone's graduating with $200,000 or more in debt, and actually it's yeah. even more, more than that, probably, because yeah. of the opportunity cost, yeah. the lost income and the, all the other costs, it's probably about a half a million dollar endeavor. Yeah. So the thing you really need to think about is, you know, when you're not ever practicing law, you've got the skill sets you never really had to, you, you put to use. So I always tell our students one thing that you, you might want to roll up your sleeves and, and just do it for yeah. a while to make sure you know exactly what you're rejecting. That's right. You know, it's, yeah. it's interesting to say that because I've had clients who they've gone back, they've left the law and then gone back after doing contract work or doing something else. And then some have stayed, but others have said, you know what? The second time did it for me. I knew it wasn't a fit for me. And so, um, but they feel better about it. You know, even though it took some time, they feel really, really sincerely good that they've tried it. Well, and think about this for a second. How many students do you see, med students, that you see that go through that entire process and say, I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a doctor? Yeah. I mean, how many convers those conversations are very rare. Right. And the difference is, and then we go back, it's the residency. Because it's the residency where you learn how to become, you know, uh, you put all the stuff together and become a doctor. And that's what we look at is the three years after law school is almost, whether it be in the private sector or right. the public sector, is that residency where all of the things that you've learned while you're in school, during, you know, and start to come all together. Interesting. It makes a lot of sense, Mark. And one of the things I did when I was getting ready to graduate law school was I said, let me find a job with someone that does a lot of types of the law is in a different set of niches, multiple niches, maybe a general mm -hmm. practitioner. Because one of the things I had no clue about was what was I going to do as a lawyer? What would I l really enjoy or even like? And so I found a guy who did litigation, did condo law, did real estate, did family law. And, he, and, and I went into all those areas and found exactly what I liked, but there was a lot about the, the other stuff that I didn't. And so I think it's important that we do exactly what you're talking about. Go out, get out in, 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 after law school and test the waters. And, and if you don't like one area of law, don't stay with it long term because yeah. most people that do that, they never get out. And so I love that idea. That's a, a great tip for yeah. anybody that's in law school and, and getting ready to graduate or well, even a new, new uh, graduate. And even while you're in law school, but through your coursework, through your, um, your summer, through internships, through the summer programs, through clinical programs yes. at yes. schools, there's a lot of ways that you can get actual great data point. And most importantly, and it sounds like what you've done an amazing job at, is through networking and informational yes. interviewing. Yeah, that's right. You can learn a ton. And what I have found is most people are really ready, willing, and able to help. Most people oh, yeah. want to be helpful. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's sure. the thing I tell people before they go to, if someone calls me and says, you know, my son's looking to go to law school, daughter, whatever, I say, go and sit down with some lawyers. Make sure law school is the right fit for you first and foremost. But when you're in law school, go and sit with some lawyers that are practicing in the fields yeah. that, in the niches that you want to go and really ask them to be blunt with you. What do you do all day long? What kind of uh, hours do you keep? How what kind of living do you make? And, and nobody does a lot of that. And I'm glad to hear that you guys are, are pushing your students to do that because I think it's important. My goal is to help lawyers love the law. And I feel that from you too. And, and I love the office that you guys have because not a lot of law schools are doing what you do. So yeah. kudos to you, Mark. And I, you know, I, the critical part, 
is critical. The critical thinking is really critical. And, and I say that out of experience because you know, I, I joke, but it's true. You know, I was a Jewish kid who didn't like blood, who <laughs> at, at the end of uh, undergrad. A doctor was out. Oh, yeah, That's doctor right. was out. Um, <laughs> and I just was too lazy for the job market. And I said, well, you know, people. You couldn't have been an accountant? I, <laughs> well, yeah. I was well, still I, available, right? I was, a, I was a liberal arts major, Mark. I was a liberal arts major. <laughs> and I just said, well, I'm on a, I want to have fun this summer. And so I didn't do the job market. And I'm just going to go to law school. I mean, that was well, it. And, and you know what? And a lot of people go to law school because they got in. That's right. Yes. That's right. Know, how do you turn, fill in the blank. I can't turn Harvard down. I can't turn, name the school. It's That's a great right. opportunity. And there's lots of things that you can do. But we often see, first of all, there's a lot of students who come who are making really informed decisions. Yeah. Good. But there's many who, you know, why are you here? Yeah. You know, yeah, and I can see that. sometimes we see people spending more time planning a vacation. That's right. Than they do thinking about their loss year. Without Perfect. It we, we've talked about that on this podcast before. And, and it, it, the more people that realize that they need to spend time before they even decide to go to law school. But also, we just talked about it. Spend some time before you decide what kind of niche you might want to go into, too. Right. They go hand in hand. I think it's really important. So, Mark, you know, we've talked about people leaving. And obviously, that's my focus. But... You know, we'd love to hear stories that, that you have or tips on, you know, people who actually enjoy the law, who even in big law, um, but are there examples you know of or, or anecdotes or even inspirations around folks who've gone into the law, it was a fit for them, how they've done it, how they've gone through those three years and, and moved on? There are so many people who really like what, not a, there's a lot of people who really love what they're doing. Yeah. And of course, there's people who we know that. We know that there's the stories of the unhappy lawyers. But you know, so to answer your question, you know, on a daily basis, I, I find that there's tons of um, our alums and students really enjoy what they're doing. That's great. But the people who enjoy what they're doing, it's for a couple things. One is they've done a lot of the self-assessment. Yeah. They actually... As a lawyer, I, I think like you, like you said, what well, you both have said, well, you need to know what you do. And a lot of the work, it's a lot of research, it's a lot of writing, it's a lot of analysis. Yeah. You need to know that. So the people who really like it, really like being students of the law. They like the yeah. theory. They like the analysis, depending if they're working in a big law setting. They like the people. Yeah. You know, there's common traits, you know, I'm not saying that every person, you know, who goes to a firm or goes, you know, when they leave here is, is the first job is like the Mecca and it's like, Oh my God, it's the greatest thing. Right. But a lot of people do enjoy what they're doing. And I think what's important is understanding how your job fits into your life. Yes. How your job, the first job is part of the big picture of where you're going. Right. And Oftentimes, your first job is the building blocks. It's giving you the tools, the skill set, and the knowledge and information for the next opportunity. That's right. So oftentimes, if you think of it, like especially when you're going into big law, which is the majority of our students at graduation will be doing that in their first or second year, if you have that mindset knowing that this is going to be the first of a really long and distinguished career, you understand when you're doing doc review that yeah. that's just part of the, the process. process. Yes. Right. So the people, you know, I can think about, I think about, as you were saying, that several alums who are not only surviving but thriving in their environment, but it really goes back to they like the people, they like the environment, they like what they're doing, yeah. and there's some type of connection, whether it be yeah. connection to the people, the subject matter, the law, there's got to be some meaning to it. You That's know, right. you think about public service lawyers, it's really easy. You can get connected to, um, it's much yeah. easier to get connected to a mission. When you're in a law firm, it's really, you you can be connected to, you really like the business aspects of the, um, the matter. You really like yeah. working on teams or projects, but it's not the same as putting someone behind bars, you yeah, know, and saying, yeah. I really, 
but you still have to have that connection. You yeah. still have to be something where it, it matters, it has meaning, and you like it. And you know, it, I, I, and, and the point that jumped out to me was in the beginning was they've done that critical assessment. They've done, they've, they've spent that time and, you know, that critical assessment, what does that mean? It's, it's, it's courageous. It's opening up. It's thinking about what you like. It's talking to people like you, talking to their family, realizing what they're good at, realizing what they're not good at. I mean, it, it takes, it's not just 20 minutes writing down pros and cons. It is a real uh, process from, from the heart, from the soul. In many ways, you know what? It's so true. And what I um, what I always tell students is, it's your law degree, and you get to students and alumni, you get to do whatever you want with it. Yeah. And I think what happens is, I, I when I talk to the one L class, oftentimes I talk about you can get into this mindset of what you think your classmates think you should do, or what your parents think you should right. do, yep. or what your friends think you should do. And I said, if you get into that mindset, you end up shooting all over yourself. That's right, exactly. And we, and so I always say, instead of saying what you should do, <laughs> change should to would like. That's right. Because when you do that, the answers become different. They so do not what you should do. You're saying, here's what I would like to do. Yeah. And oftentimes we see, and you probably see this all the time with people leaving the law, is they're afraid of disappointing someone. Oh, that's number biggie. one or number two, I, uh, without a, a doubt. Mark, can we use that shooting all over yourself? Can we <laughs> use that on Mark? Anytime. That was no, that was that was huge. That was absolutely huge. I, the way you said that, it, you're absolutely right. It, it's it's so funny when I talk to people who are in their early 40s and we go to what and they want to leave the law and we go to what started it all. It was their parents. Their parents at 26 said, no, no, no you are going to law school, or at least they thought their parents uh, were, were pushing them to do that. Oh, my parents pushed me. And, and most of the people that I talk to, that's exactly yeah. it. The, the parents thought it was a good idea. And I, I always tell people, you know, doctor, lawyer, that's what parents have pushed since the fifties, really. And when you l look at me, I, I became a lawyer. My sister became a doctor. I mean, we just, we listened without really uh, understanding what we were doing. And, and yeah. in, in the end, it worked out really great for both of us, but still, that critical thinking is so powerful. Even yeah. staying in the law or maybe going into a new niche, it's it, critical thinking is exactly what we learn in law school, right? I mean, that's yeah. part of the process. Yeah. So your, is your sister still um, practicing medicine? Well, she actually is a chiropractor and an acupuncturist. She didn't want to go as into MD stuff, but she still is. But she's actually uh, thinking about going out and, and doing consulting and teaching online uh, nutrition and all kinds of stuff. And so she didn't go into the medical uh, MD side, but uh, she definitely is a, a doctor in every sense of the word as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, she, uh, she's still doing it and uh, really enjoys it. But uh, she's almost at 17, 18 years, and, and sometimes that's enough in some profession. Right, but, when, but the point I was going to say is when you're going through the training, the first thing, again, they, usually you don't abandon you know, the end goal, especially when someone's going down a, you know, a uh, – in a, in a medical path. Right. And so that was the, you know, that was what, and that's consistent with what we, you know, we're saying at the beginning. Of. Well, interesting when, when you say that we've kind of discussed that in small ways on this podcast. And one of the things I love about having a law degree and, and it's very powerful about a law degree that's unlike any kind of other degree. And I know you were a CPA and, and there's doctors and stuff like that, but really our profession is one of the only professions that I know of where you can get the degree and not use it per se, but it, really lends so much to any kind of career you could want to go into. And, and people do, I mean, I talked to people that said, oh, I'm going to law school because it's on my bucket list. And I said, do it if that's what you want. But, you know, when you look at doctors, there's not a lot of other, a lot of other opportunities for yeah. doctors with that MD or the DO or whatever they're doing, like a lawyer has with a JD. So I think, you know, we, we talk about how difficult the law is to be in these days, but having a law degree can be powerful as long as you have a use for it in the long run and yeah. clearly a law degree from Harvard. Come on now, Mark, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But it's tricky because a lot of, for a lot of the things that you can have a law degree, you know, the places that are hiring you with a law degree, it may not have been required. Right. It's but, true. So you take a, you know, working in consulting, yeah. you don't need a law degree. No. Yeah. But what we have found is the consultants that come here to hire our students and alumni they love the degree because yes. of the critical thinking skills, right. the analysis, the, um, 
the strong communication skills, right. the storytelling, the yeah. research. Storytelling. I mean, there's there is so much to it, and I agree. Yeah. Now, Mark, I have a question. Uh, yeah. we, we've got we got about ten more minutes of your time. I knew, but I want before we did. I wanted to hear about you. Uh, you left the law, in a way, and you know I come across so many people who are in their thirties. They practice for some time. They have the law firm experience, and they feel like, "Well, I'd love to leave the law. I'd love to teach. I'd love to help. I'd love to mentor." But I, how do I cross that chasm? How do I make that jump? Who's going to hire me? My skills are transferable. I don't want to go back and just teach high school history. How did you shift to going from working in a firm to, to now being where, where you're at, which is, which is you're a mentor. You're, I mean, you're an advisor. You're a, you're a whisperer. You're a Seuss, you know, a Sherpa. How do, you, how do you go from law firm to Sherpa? Well, it doesn't happen overnight. And right. I think that was the first thing that, you know, uh, I think you have to start um, positioning yourself for it. So when I realized, you know, it was interesting. And I can, you know, talking about myself, what I'm doing today is when I told people what I wanted to do, they go, everyone said, oh, my God, that's a natural extension of yeah, yeah. who you've always been. Right. So it was yeah. pretty logical. So what I always, the way you do it and the way I did it was, I did a lot of informational interviewing and networking to learn about what was the skill go. set that I needed. There you go. Then I looked at my resume and said, okay, here's what I have. What does it need to look like? Right. And how did I start to get those skills? So let's, so using my example, I was practicing law. I really like working with students. I taught when I was an undergrad mm -hmm. in, or in, in law school. Yeah. And so when you want to go into higher ed, for example, you need to show, did you start? You got to start looking the part. I started teaching at um, teaching part time, in addition to my, uh, you know, practicing law. Then I also needed to get some more experience working with students. I did some counseling. I did some. I volunteered. I got on a lot of different panels and programs. I worked with students who were thinking about going to law yeah. school. Mm. So now, after a few years between the teaching between doing presentations, writing articles, networking, yeah. and connecting with people, I started to look the part. You know, Mark, I heard some great advice where they said, all right, you want to move, you want to know about such and such industry? Volunteer. Yes. Volunteer for an hour, a day, whatever it is. And you just, you dip your toe in there and you see, and you either cross it off your list and say, no way, or you do what you did where you you, you start getting, it becomes that extension of yourself. Well, so here's the interesting part, you know, and you've all, I'm sure, I know you're familiar with Deborah Aaron's book, What Can You Do With a Law Degree? Mm. And her framework, I make every advisor or anybody I'm working with read it because I said, it's, who am I, where am I going? Yeah. And what am I willing to give up yes. to get what I want? Yeah. Yeah. Normally it's that third question. Yeah, that's right. So for me, you know, I'm, I'm from Chicago. That was my hometown, one of the best city in the one of the best cities. Love in the, Chicago. Although Boston and Cambridge are becoming a really close um, <laughs> second. second. It's a close second, yeah. But here's the thing: I didn't want to leave Chicago. That was where I owned my home, my family, my friends. But the opportunity, and if you look at my resume, yeah. my first opportunity, I went down to Champaign, Illinois. That's a couple hundred miles south of Chicago. Yeah. That's where the University of Illinois is. That's where I went to school. And so oftentimes you need to be flexible in terms of whether it be geographically, yeah. in terms of the position, yeah. in terms of the salary. Something's got to give. Yeah. If you're willing to, to, to get you into that market. I go down to Champaign. I thought I was going to be there for a year. I ended up staying there for six years, from 1994 to 2000. I met my partner there. My life changed. That wasn't part of the plan. Right. And, but if someone told me in 1994, I would be working at Harvard Law School, yeah. working with students and alumni. My last, one of my bosses is now on the Supreme Court of yeah. the United States. Oh, yeah. wow. These are things you couldn't possibly imagine, but it all started with, putting my foot in the water yeah. and actually willing to take some chances because you don't know your career path. You, 
a lot of things can happen, but you got to put things in play. And, and Mark, what I love about this is the spirit of what you're doing, whether you knew it at the time or not, you were following what I call your unique genius, which is you were doing things that will that, that align with you, as you That's said, right. are an extension of you. They, not that you phone them in and just it's easy to do, but like they were things that you just did really well, mentoring, teaching, showing empathy. Absolutely. Yes. And, and, and that's what, you know, and, and I think one of the questions, you know, you, we were talking about it one, um, in, in another conversation was, well, the question I always think about is how do you feel on Sunday night? Mm, that's right. How do you feel on Sunday night? And I got to tell you, in all my years, I've come back from, I'm all, I love my job. I love what I do. Yeah, I love and it. on Sunday night, I don't have a pit in my stomach. So good. And that's the thing, because one of the things we always, when someone, you ask someone how they feel, and that'll tell you a lot. Yeah. But, and, you know, and you know, for a lot of attorneys, it may be Saturday night, because they're going in the office on Sunday. And, you know. Yeah, true. But yeah, it's the, true. The, the Sunday but night thing. Some of it, you need to be realistic, too. The one thing I didn't say um, was I also was saving money. And I was living, you know, I did not want to have the golden handcuffs. Yes. Because there's, there is a practical reality to say that, um, you know, finances, to say that money doesn't matter is not being realistic. That's right. It, for some people, it will matter, and it can be really important. So how you live. Yeah makes a big difference in terms of uh, what afforded me to make that first move and take over a six figure, more than a six figure pay cut mm. was that I was able, that I had been planning for it, preparing that's for it. And sometimes, cause that's oftentimes, and you know, this a big obstacle for someone making Huge. change is it. And I understand that, but what I always say is we all make choices and, yeah. you know, in, yeah, after a while, if you choose, if you choose to be in that position, that's your choice, that's you know, right. because there are lots of options that you can do. That's right. Well, you didn't let that stop you. And now your Sunday nights are joyful because you look forward to the next day. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And Mark, I know you got to get to a meeting. You're an extremely busy guy. We're going to get you to that meeting, but we want to have you back because there's a lot of things that we didn't touch on today. Yeah. And we want you to know, we truly appreciate it because the stuff that came through you today and the teaching that you're going to share with the people that Huge. listen to us is massive. This stuff is so important to, for everyone to hear, and we definitely want to have you back, but we thank you from the bottom of our heart for spending the time with us today. We're truly appreciative. Really. I will come back in a heartbeat. This, is, you. this was fun. Right. Really enjoyed it, and I look forward to continuing the conversation. And if I was at Harvard, I would be camped out in your office talking to whoever I could as much as I could because this is, is something that everybody at Harvard Law needs to make sure that they take advantage of. And I, uh, hopefully I don't cause you too much work, Mark, but uh, truly your office is doing special things. And yeah. I, I really do give you kudos for all of what you guys are doing there. It's important. So. Well, thank you. And when you like what you're doing, it's not work. That's right. right. You got that right. Everyone. Well, thank you, guys. Yes, Mark, thank, thank you. you. Everyone, thank you for being part of the Love or Leave the Law community. Uh, Mark is going to come back. We're going to have more. Uh, we got a ton of more episodes coming down the pike. So thank you, everybody, for being part of our community. Email us anytime. Uh, join us. Share us. We're on uh, YouTube. We're on iTunes. And thank you again for being part of the community. We yes. appreciate it. Bye now. Bye-bye. Thank you.